What is a summer kimono? And why are yukata no summer kimono, although they are all worn in summer? This is what I'm going to talk about in this video. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I am a fully trained and professional kimono teacher and stylist. Summer kimono are called in Japanese natsumono, or you can also call them usomono. Natsumono literally means natsu, summer mono thing, so it's a summer thing. <laughs> usomono, the uso of usomono means thin, which is actually pointing out to the fabric natsumono or summer kimono are originally made of. And this is also the biggest difference between yukata and so-called natsumono. Yukata are usually made of cotton, linen or nowadays also polyester. And when you look closer to the fabric it is made of, you can tell it's usually not see-through or in any way sheer. When you learn Japanese, you also might have wondered why yukata is also written with the character for showering. Because yukata means literally showering garment. <laughs> and this is because yukata was worn in the middle age to go to the public bath. Or as pyjamas. <laughs> so it was nothing you could wear on the streets and it was absolutely no-go to wear it on the streets. Nowadays you often wear yukatas when you're hopping between the baths at so-called onsen towns. This is not the original yukata, this is something that was adapted to the onsen culture when people started to go to onsens for tourism stuff. <laughs> That's why usually when you see a lot of people wearing yukata in those onsen towns, on those yukata they have the name of the accommodation they're staying at. But why was it a no-go to wear yukata on the streets? Just see it as an old European dress. When you wear your dress you would wear your stays and your chemise under it and so whatever what was needed to be properly dressed. And it's the same with kimono. You would need an undergarment to be properly dressed. So yukata were more like pajamas, close to an undergarment, something you wouldn't really wear on the streets. Of course, today a lot of people wear yukata to go to summer festivals, matsuri and see the fireworks. And there is nothing wrong with that because kimono changed a lot and also the climate changed and Japan is way too hot than wear all those layers of kimono every day and also a good thing on the yukata side is that they are not as expensive as a kimono as well as they're easier to maintain because you can wash them by yourself so people start to wear more yukata and that's why nowadays yukata are even in Japan mostly known as a summer kimono although they're not you wouldn't call a kimono a yukata but yukata kimono because it's like jeans are. Jeans are trousers but not every trousers are jeans. So that's what kind of you should yukata put into. The real summer kimono or natsumono on the other side would need a proper undergarment which is a nagojiban or a hanjiban or a juban and usually there are also summer undergarments made of this very sheer and nice special summer fabric I'm going to talk about later. You can also wear your summer kimono with a nagoya obi or if it's a more formal kimono there are also more formal kimonos everything in their special summer edition and you would also need all necessary accessories for it which are obijime, obiage and they will be also made in this special summer edition. In summer you're supposed to look very cool and fresh and not sweating at all. That's why usually a lot of summer kimono and summer kimono accessories are very sheer, see-through as well as pretty lace -ish. I 
I was talking a lot about this special kind of fabric and I want to go into detail with that. And when I talk about the special kind of fabric, I don't mean what the fabric is made of because summer kimono are usually made of silk or even polyester or even cotton or even linen. And when I mean special fabric, I actually mean the way it is woven is special. And there are a lot of ways to weave summer kimono and it's up to impossible to collect all of them without being broke <laughs> after that. So today I'm going to talk about the most common ones, the ones you see most often on a summer kimono. And I'm gonna start with the very most well-known, the so-called ro. Ro is what I would explain as a woven stripes because there are see-through stripes woven into non-see-through stripes and when you see that on a kimono it is 100% a ro kimono but there are also different kinds of ro um, I want to show you three of them the first one is the so-called sanhon ro sanhon ro is very delicate very sheer and you see it a lot on kimonos especially formal kimonos and when we compare it to the next one I want to show you, the Gohonro, you can see that Gohonro is not as sheer because the non-see-through stripes grow a little bigger. It is said that this makes Gohonro a little more durable than Sambonro and that's why it's often used for obiage and other kimono items. But I am pretty sure you can also find kimono made of Gohonro. And there is also a so-called tatero. Tate means vertical, which means the stripes are vertical and not horizontal as they are usually are. I only own an obiage with it, but it's fun to compare how the stripes go when you lay both obiage together. I think tatero is something on the rare side, so if you have a kimono with tatero, you can call yourself pretty lucky, I think. A reason why ro is very common is because it is usually used to be dyed after it is woven, which makes it easier to produce because you don't have to dye the thread before you weave it. But of course, there are also obi made of ro that have a woven pattern inside their normal ro weave, and this makes it very, very beautiful and precious as well. Another summer weave is the so called sha. Sha is like a very delicate and fine mesh and you often find the so-called mon sha which means that there is a pattern woven into the sha. Of course there are also sha with a dyed pattern and there are also obiage made of sha and if you have one of those treasure it because they are rarely produced anymore and I think in the near future they won't be produced at all. Another kind of sha that is not that well known, but when you know it, you definitely want it, is a so-called sha awase. Sha awase means the two layers of sha were put together into one kimono. And usually they make sure that they use different colors when putting them together and sometimes even the woven pattern in the sha is different. And this gives this kind of kimono this super texture it is magical and so gorgeous and a really really luxury and rare kimono and as i don't own one i really want to thank my friend anna for sending me this footage she is by the way teaching um, japanese dance in tokyo and it is definitely worth to check out her instagram as well as her homepage. she is a very nice and awesome person check her out <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk about my favorite fabric for kimono, which is linen. 100% <laughs> linen kimono are called johu. And they are very easy to maintain because you can wash them and they're super cool. By the way, you can tell it's not see-through, which means the way you decide how to tailor it, it could be a yukata or a kimono or even both. 
Usually when you look for yukato or summer kimono online and they say linen, it's most of the time a mix of cotton and linen. But it doesn't really change with the texture and it's still pretty cool and you can wash it at home. So linen is just awesome. And of course, all weaves and all fabrics I was talking about until now, we have obis for that. Plus there is this different weave that I have learned is only for obi, it's the so-called ra. Ra looks like sha but is way more roughly woven and the holes are way bigger. So they say it's not good for a kimono because you would see a lot what you're wearing under your kimono with that big holes in it. But I have a friend who told me better and she found out that there are actually ra kimono out there. So for me, this tells me again, never say never when it comes to kimono. My favorite obi for summer is the so-called Sha Kenjo. Sha Kenjo is actually just a summer version of a Hakata Ori obi. Hakata is a part of the city of Goka and is very famous for its weave. And they have this Kenjo pattern, which is the most traditional and most famous pattern of it. And Sha Kenjo actually means they just put that pattern into a Sha weave. And then you have a summer Hakata Ori. And it's called Sha Kenjo because why not call it summer Hakata or something? <laughs> So this was my general overview over summer kimono and believe me there is so much more out there. If you know more, tell me down below in the comments and if you have some kimonos that I call as rare and I don't own, share those pictures with me please, I would love to see it. If you want to see more videos like this with historical kimono, how kimonos are made, what kind of fabrics are out there, tell me in the comments leave me a thumb up or even share this video so I know that, oh yes, you want to see more of these videos. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet and you feel like sticking around a little more, feel free to subscribe and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!